Welcome back, everyone, for our Smoky Mountain Wrestling Podcast. This is Smoky Mountain Wrestling, episode number 59, from March the 13th of 1993. Going to be a good episode. I got it. I feel it in my blood. It's boiling. It's going to happen this week. How did it fix things, baby? Off top, we are in a new location, which I hopefully, hopefully I'm saying this right. Caton's Chapel Elementary School in Seaverville, Tennessee. If I'm not saying it right, well, just send your hate mail to me. The reported attendance here is 700 people in the house, and this was taped March 1st, 1993. Doc, how you doing this week, man? Spring break, dude. March 13th, 1993. I was 19 years old. God mm. damn, you're old. Yeah. I wasn't uh. then. I wasn't then though, pal. I was on my way to 18 at this point as uh, Harper ru- ruffles through his binder over there. His trapper keeper. Yeah. Harper, how you doing? That's not doing all right, man. Ready to find out who, who's the mystery fucking partner. I know, you man. We Hulk got... Hulk, you said it was Hulk Hogan. It is. I heard it was Tommy Dreamer. Or I heard Taz. John Cena. What about John Saxon? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Inside so. joke. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> okay. Doc, well, you know, we're in a new location, Doc. It's Seaverville, Tennessee. Caton's Chapel Elementary School. And when it comes to, like we used to say, church and wrestling, the word chapel in there makes me think church. Maybe I um, shouldn't think that, but, you know, we got a wrestling ring in a chapel, whatever. Uh, anyway, give us the demographics, Doc. Hit us with it. First of all, I have a little question here. Okay. We're in an elementary school. Why does an elementary school need a gym? Yeah, for real, huh? Why? Yeah. Yeah, they don't have a gym, Jim. There's no sports teams. Right. What fucking elementary schools did y'all go to? We had a playground where we had recess, Jack. Right. I mean, it, I, I played. I played basketball and flag football at my elementary schools when I was a kid. Well, that's the only way to get out of the ghetto, right? That's get nice. That's nice. Yeah. All right. I, I mean, so, in, so anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to spend this hour beating you up, even as fun as it is, because we've got your, serious your kids. To get to. Your kid's school doesn't have a gym. It does, but they don't really go to it very often. Okay. Uh, and it's not like this. You couldn't even put a wrestling ring in there. Uh, right. So anyway, whatever. I'm not here to debate this with you. I'm here to talk about Seaverville, Tennessee. We are in eastern Tennessee. Population of about 14,800. Not a small town. 14,800? Mm-hmm. Pretty damn big. Mm-hmm. Get this. 88.9% white. That's it? That's it. <laughs> but figure this out. Only what a fucking point. disappointing place, man. What a, but only 1.5% African American. Bro, where the black people at for real? Mm, they're, all, in, they're, on the, they're in the big cities, pal. Didn't they, you see the election results? They're in the big, <laughs> they're in the big cities. It's no other way to put it. They're afraid <laughs> of being out in these little towns, man. All of a sudden, they'll find themselves out in a cotton field again. Shit. That's nice. That's Dog, nice, they, Doc. I'm just saying. All right. Jeez. What other, dem- the, the median, what other demographics the median, you got? The median income is 36,919. That's not terrible. No, that's for not them, horrible. For them, that's a fuck a millionaire. <laughs> uh and and uh compared to some of its other Smoky Mountain hosting cities, only 18% is under the poverty line. So um that's good for them, I think. It's like and, the Jeffersons, man, moving on up to the east side up in that bitch. Yeah, and perhaps most importantly, it's the birthplace of Dolly Parton. Okay, well, whatever. The great, what, why, you're going to gloss over the great Dolly Parton? What's so great about her? Well, she's Work got two things. Five. She's got two things that are great. Plus, I was never impressed by that. Uh, I'm sure she, you weren't. Um, I like some thick thighs and a big ass. Tits are all right, but I mean, she, you know. She also gets a place, should get a place in everyone's heart for writing the great song Jolene. And I'm mm-hmm. sure you've never heard it, but most people have, and it's a great song. Don't have a clue what you're talking about. Right. 
Yeah. All right, are we done? Can we get to the this episode of Smoky Mountain? Just setting the table for, you know, I, I don't want to give away any spoilers just yet, but this is like when you, remember when I said, just wait, just wait from episode one and two, just wait, this will all pay off one day. This is like when you nut your girl and a baby pops out nine months later. Oh. This, this is the, this is the baby. <laughs> now let's wash off, now let's wash off the afterbirth and get started. <laughs> That's nice, Doc. Okay, we'll, we'll get into this. Here we go. Dutch and Bob Cottle at the opening. Um, <laughs> Dutch's signs. Cars I have loved and women I have wrecked are written on his signs. The Beat the Champ TV title will be Dixie Dynamite versus Tim Horner. And Down and Dirty will feature the Dirty White Boy and Ron Wright. Dutch says he will find out if Ron Wright is healed up since everyone is accusing Mr. Wright of being able to walk. Doc, your thoughts from... I think you'll have something to say about what he said about Ron Wright accused of everyone accusing him of being able to walk. I don't, his contact fell out. How would he know? He needs to. <laughs> he needs to get. He needs to get with these two and figure out what happened. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Harper, your thoughts. He didn't see a damn thing. <laughs> when it happened, when it went down last week, <laughs> Dutch was like. Oh, 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 Bob, my contacts just fell out. I, I can't see nothing. <laughs> True heel move. Well, we go to the first match. It's Tim Horner versus Dixie Dynamite. I felt like they teased a little bad blood here between them, but, you know, it wasn't I mean, it wasn't too much. And you got babyface versus babyface. Yeah. This was not my favorite match for obvious reasons, and we just have better stuff in this episode. Horner gets the win with the natural bridge. I'll throw it to you, Hopper. Anything from this, or were you kind of just like, man? No, it's just a bunch of chain wrestling, small package type stuff. You know? Yeah. Uh, Doc, you? Is that a new ring or a new ring mat? Because it looks different than what we've seen, and and the ring looks really springy to me. Did anybody notice that? No. I didn't notice, but it wouldn't surprise me if we've got a new canvas. And yeah, I'm actually, for real. I'm actually looking at it right here. And the only reason I say that is because if they use the same canvas for a year, let's just think of all the blood that was spilled on that motherfucker over the last year. And they get worn make, out. They get, They do. They get worn out. And I'm looking at the ring right now, and it's it does look rather either well lit or clean or the canvas looks clean but that's that would be my take on it so you may i think you might be on to something at least with the canvas i know it's not a new ring because you just don't that's just not something to just easily go about and do especially back then even i mean now you could buy one but still it it still wouldn't be something you'd want to do you'd rather just uh, keep the one you have and and fix the canvas or get a new canvas and whatnot but uh Maybe Doc, you may be onto something there. That's Th- true. Things you know, things you notice when Tim Horner's in the ring. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're looking for something else to entertain <laughs> you, right? Caudle said a match like this has never taken place for the TV title with two good guys, but apparently he doesn't remember when Reno Riggins fought Tracy Smothers for the title just a few weeks ago. Uh, let, let's not let uh, Bob Caudle's uh, lack of remembering facts. Uh, so, uh... Nobody is above my. Scrutiny. No one. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Anything but else overall, from that, Doc? But overall, this is very meh. Yeah. Well, I mean, we got too much that's going to go down in this in this hour for us to fucking worry about, you know, this. But so let's move on because we're going to get to it shortly. Next match is Lynn Fields and Jeff Daniels versus the Rock and Roll Express with a man under the sheet. Uh, that the Rock and Roll Express come out with. That's going to be, I I assume, their mystery partner, right? Cornette joins the commentary at about the 12.10 mark. I'm going to play it just because of what he says, and I figured we'd, we'd all get a good laugh out of this and have some fun with it. So here it is. Jim Cornette in the heavenly bodies. What? Cornette all laughing and going, hey, what, what, you, what are you laughing? What in the world are you laughing okay. about? You, Why can't he put this thing on? You don't know who's under there. Why, why are you laughing at I know it? who it is. It's David Duke. That's David Duke up there at ringside. I've seen him a million times. <laughs> Can you believe this? Can you believe that the Rock and Roll Express don't have no more guts than that? They couldn't find anybody. I knew they wouldn't be able to get anybody. And what have they done? They have took some goof, 
some, probably from down at the Texaco station, <laughs> dressed him up like Casper the Ghost, dragged him in here, and they're trying to make us think they've got some kind of credible guy that's going to be a mystery partner. Jim, They I, couldn't find nobody with the guts to get in the ring with us. Jim, Bob, you shut up. Jim, you, you I have known these me. guys a long, long time. They're not those type of individuals. If they say they hey, got a partner, i got to believe they got somebody under there. You believe anything people tell you. That's why you're in politics. Let me tell you something right now. They get a bunch of stinking cowards in that dressing room back there, and every single one of them turned the Rock and Roll Express down, would not be their partner. They couldn't find... All right, uh, the main comment I had there was the David Duke one and, and yeah. whatnot and Casper the Ghost. So I don't know if y'all had much from that. I'll throw it to you first, Harper. Did not expect that. <laughs> David but, Duke. But, you know, just uh, one of the things uh, you can get away with 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah, of course. Doc, your thoughts from that part. How many? Right. How many people do you think in that crowd were talking about, well, that's not how you wear a sheet. I can show them how you wear a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, he'll have a point. <laughs> hey, how you wear a sheet, brother? Who got that damn outfit for him? That's a messed up clan outfit. Shit, man. If they want one, if they want a good one, I got one in the truck. Let me go back in the truck and get them what you need. Hey, Ricky, Robert, come talk to me, brother. I got I got some stuff in the truck that'll help you out, man. Yeah, I could see that, Doc. Yeah. Ah, oh, boy. Uh, All right. And then, um, do you think it was, I mean, this isn't obviously Tommy Rich under the ring for the for three hours waiting to come out, but he just stood there through the course of the match, whoever that, that, he is. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, we're going to go to that in a second in the big reveal. But yeah, he just stood there under a sheet. He stood there. Uh, the match does end very quick, although he did stand out there for a little while. Rock and roll wins, of course. Any other thoughts, Doc, from the commentary in the match? I think we should just move along here yes. to this greatness. Doc, I mean, Harper, you? Let's roll. Yeah, let's roll. Well, here it is. I'm going to play it. It's the big reveal, and here we go. Come over and talk to the mystery partner there. That is the funniest thing. That's the funniest thing that I've seen in a week or two. You ain't conning nobody. You ain't got nothing. That's a go. Look at all these rednecks. They probably see people in sheets coming up to their house all the time. You ain't got nobody. You're scared. You ain't got nobody. Nobody will team up with you. That's some jerk, jerk, some goof. Oh, yeah. You talk big, Cornette, but I tell you one thing. If you got the guts in you, won't you go pull that sheet off of him and see if it's nobody. Go see if it's nobody, big boy. That goes for all three of you. Bobby, hey, 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 hey. Let's go over and get a yeah. good laugh. Let's, Let's go over and go see go Big just, Bubba from the gas station. Just, just stay in front of me. Hey, Bobby, come here. Come here, Bobby. Come here. <laughs> all right, and Jim Cornette, now in the heavenly bodies. They're going to walk right down the ringside. Rick, I don't know, is he going to, is he going to pull it off? I don't think so. But if he does, what a surprise he's going to have because Go I told you, Cornette, I had a mystery partner for you. He just punched him. And he punched him again, right? Let <laughs> him punch him. Come on, Cornette. Oh, he's getting a little brave now. He's not doing nothing. Watch this. Oh, look at this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Him or what? Yeah, I don't know what he's going to do. Let's see. He's going to pull it off. Ah! Oh, my heavens! Close your back up! And pull it up. about to have a heart attack. It's Orlando. That's what we're going to do. Orlando's 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 going to do. Makes a beeline to get out. Whoa, what a wild time. All right, I paused it. There's a lot that happened right there, and we still got more to go on the audio because Arn, Arn's going to cut a promo, and we can't. We always got to listen to Arn. I'll throw it to Hopper first. Hopper, what's your thoughts on what we saw right there? Was the sheet pulled off, and then Arn and Rock and Roll beating down the Heavenly Bodies for a second? Who would have thunk it, man? No shit. Bro, they're bringing out. 
that's a big deal to have someone like him there. Arn Anderson in Seaverville, Tennessee at Caton's Chapel Elementary School. Right. I mean, he's a legit star. Like, he's legit. not an old uh, washed-up guy either. He that, is uh, a founding member of the Four Fucking Horsemen. Yes. And these are some lucky motherfuckers to see all this shit. Yeah, buddy. And, and, uh, and, and, and I love it when uh, Bobby Eaton goes to try to shake his hand like, hey, fellow WCW guy, and then he just punches him in the face. Right. He's like, screw and, this. And, and when he takes that fucking backdrop on oh. the floor, fuck you, bro. You can hear it, too. Uh-huh. It's like okay. one of the Mulkey brothers hitting the floor. Mm. <laughs> mm. All right. Doc, you. Go ahead. What's causing all this? <laughs> What's causing all this? Well, we're getting ready to find out why he's there. Um, but listen to the crowd. I mean, that's an organic reaction. He throws those punches. It's on. And I did one of the one of the thoughts I had was exactly what you guys said, which is, I wonder what Arn thought as he was driving up to this school of just like hmm. a, a fucking elementary school, right? <laughs> He's like, "Can I park here? This is his teacher parking. Is it okay? It doesn't <laughs> well, say wrestler. It doesn't say wrestler parking." <laughs> yeah, you got to remember too, though. WCW was getting was in a down period and they worked some small venues and well yeah and... that's because your boy watts was over there destroying it okay yeah let's just throw a jab at bill watts right now anyway okay doc any other thoughts before we listen to the actual promo that they cut after he is revealed no i think we need to know why he's here yes because this is important Arn ties this shit together here we go god does he ever All right, what a... you see bob Cuddle? Every time that we wrestle Jimmy Cornett and the Heavenly Bodies, it's always 302 or 402. And I told you, Cornett, I had myself a mystery partner, and I brought him here tonight for the whole world to see who he is, the Four Horsemen, Arn Anderson. More than a surprise, Arn. I never, never in my wildest dreams would have dreamed it would have been you. I imagine everybody in this building is in shock. A few months ago, everybody thought Arn Anderson was going to fade to black. His knee injury was going to put him out forever. Yeah. Well, if you can see me now, you got to know I'm well. Now then, this isn't about me or the Rock and Roll Express. You see, they don't really like me, and I don't really like them. But all I ask when they made the call was, I'll join you in this endeavor, but just give me the same fight as my partner that you've given me in the past as my it. opponent. You got it. You got it. And I'll give you the same, but Bobby Eaton, now let's get to the reason I'm here. While I was laid up in Charlotte, North Carolina, with my knee blown out, did you come by and say, get well, Arn? I'm going to do whatever I can to help you. Let's get that knee well and going about our business. No, what you did was you ran and stuck yourself back up under Cornet. You became Cornet's little wind-up doll all over again. Let's wind Bobby up and point him and tell him what to do. Well, I never could stand Stan Lane. I can't stand Jim Cornet. But Bobby Eaton, oh yeah. You gotta have a lesson and loyalty, my friend. And if you don't give me the loyalty that you owe me, then on their behalf and my own, I'm going to beat it out of you. Because you see, if Ricky and Robert have got one fault, the only fault that the Rock and Roll Express has is right here. They got a heart. Well, my heart is on vacation in the Cayman Islands. Jim Cornette, you want to whack me with that racket? You'll have to have a gynecologist to get it out of you first thing in the morning. So take this down and take it to the bank. You may never see this tandem together ever again, but if you can get in any building where we're at, get in it while you can, because things are going to happen on our behalf 
I can guarantee you somebody's going to get hurt and it ain't going to be us. That's right, but Bob Carter. Because let me tell everybody one thing. When Rock and Roll Express and Art Anderson get together, all we do is create stormy weather. Poor fans, what a surprise and what a shock to all of the wrestling world. And we'll be back right after this. Jesus Christ. Mm. Hit the tagline, Harper. It's like watching an episode of Saturday Night, man. I know, huh? He's so believable. He ties mm. it in. He delivers the message so well. I mean, mm -hmm. fuck me, Jesus. What's the cause in all this? So the last time we saw Arn, he was in WCW tagging with Eaton. Obviously, Arn hurt his leg. That sets up the story. What's great here is that Smoky Mountain is finishing a WCW storyline for him. That is awesome. And he explains why he teams with the Rock and Roll. Yes. And he even see, he admits we haven't always seen eye to eye. We don't we like each other now. Right. We don't like each other now, but we got a common enemy. It's just so well tied together. Fuck. Mm -hmm. This is how you do it. And this is great. Fuck, you know what? You Jesus. know what else I like? I like how Arn. You know, he said, "I never likes. I never did care for Stan, or I never liked Stan Lane. I never did care for Corny." I remember a few weeks ago, probably a couple of months ago now, on the flagship show where Arn came out on Saturday night and cut a promo about him and the Tully and Rick and Corny and the Midnight Express being quality people. <laughs> right. Well, that's <laughs> before Stan Lane, though, too. Right. I know, but it's just he said, you know, I didn't like Corny, but. I mean, can you imagine being one of the 700 morons in this, this <laughs> just heading out to the wrestling matches and out pops Arn Anderson and he cuts a vicious promo that is a multi-year angle from a different promotion that we're going to settle right here. These people didn't deserve that. They had no idea what they were seeing. <laughs> you no, know, they did. All I got to say about this whole thing is... It ain't that fucking hard, guys. We ain't building a rocket. We're getting guys over in a fake fucking business. Bruh, that's that's everything right there. Everything. Yeah. It ain't that fucking hard. It it's ain't not, that it's hard. Not hard. It's not hard, but it's not simple either. No, it ain't simple, but, you, but they don't insult it's you easy. either. It's easy, but it's not simple. Yeah. Okay, uh, any other thoughts from it, Doc? Man, uh, once again, when has Smoky Mountain promised you something, and then we come on here and tell you it's coming, and then not deliver on the highest order? I mean, this is the biggest one yet. Yeah, this yeah. this shit. This I is mean, awesome. Su right, Harbor. Har Sullivan coming in was one thing. We just got a fucking founding member of the four freaking horsemen right here. The only thing bigger would be if it was fucking Flair. Right. To be honest. Yeah, right. no, it, you, that, that's it. You that's hit it. it. Flair you or fucking Sting would be the only thing bigger than this. That's the only thing. That's the only mm -hmm. thing that would make this bigger. Flair or Sting. You're right. I mean, you couldn't. Who else are you going to get from WCW that would have been Luger. a bigger, bigger surprise than that right here? Yeah, maybe Luger. Luger. Yeah. Luger, I guess. Not I, in my eyes. It's Flair. Not, right, 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 yeah. Because I think uh, you say Team Luger, Bullet. but I, but I think I think if you brought in like Tully would be bigger than Luger right there, if you ask me. Maybe Steamboat. Maybe. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay, all right. So we'll we'll keep it moving. And here's the thing: there's a local promo here, and it's R and the it. Rock and Roll. Yeah, I'm gonna play it. He repeats a lot of what he says, but it's still worth listening to. Here it is, because it's not as long. Here, Stan Lane, Tom Pritchard, and beautiful Bobby Eaton, the Heavenly Bodies, against the Rock and Roll Express and the Enforcer, Art Anderson, in Barberville. You see, Jimmy Corden, the last time was in Barberville like any other time. You and your Heavenly Bodies always leave the Rock and Roll Express laying for dead. You see, it's never two on two. It's always three on two or four on two. Well, you see, brother, we do get mad and we do get even. And right here in Barberville, you're going to find it out. You see, our mystery partner is the original Four Horsemen, Arn Anderson. Let's understand each other. The Rock and Roll Express doesn't love me. And Arn Anderson doesn't think he's John Wayne. Put on a white hat and ride into town and make everybody happy. 
You have to understand one thing, Jim Cornette. You manipulate people. You're the best. Maybe you manipulated Bobby Eaton. Maybe you didn't. The people in Barberville know. If somebody comes in town and sets your house on fire, you don't sit around toasting marshmallows. You put the fire out. Well, Jim Cornette has lit a fire under this part of the country. Rock and Roll Express and myself have one common goal. Theirs is the whole unit. They want every one of you. Bobby Eaton, I'm here to teach you one thing. When I was laid up with that bum leg, you didn't check on me. You didn't say, hey, when are we going to get back together? You bailed on me. You went running right back to Cornette. Wind him up, Cornette, and he'll do like you tell him. Bobby, you've got to learn respect. You've got to learn loyalty. I'm either going to get loyalty and respect, or I'm going to beat it out of you in Barberville. <laughs> well, again, he repeated a lot what he said a second ago, but at the same time, very effective. Doc, your thoughts? We have a new rule. What's that? On the Smoky Mountain Show. When Arn Anderson speaks, we're going to play it. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah, that something, sounds good. Some, something he said there about the people of Barberville, but he also said it in that last promo we didn't talk about. I don't know how long we'll be together. So when you see us on the marquee, you yep. better get your ass in the building. Mm -hmm. Talk about a master stroke of talking these rubes into the building. For, <laughs> to, yeah. Basically, it may he... never... It may never happen again, so you better be there. He's basically saying for a limited time only. That's right. <laughs> Which was a big marketing I, thing he's back like, in the I'm day. I'm losing money by doing Jim a favor by being here. I can't be here forever. I get yeah. to get back. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what? No no, y'all bring out a big point because back then, when it came to like products that were in the stores or even fast food restaurants. They used to always do that, availability for a limited time only. It was like... The McRib. The, I, oh, yeah. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> like, they would only do certain things for, like, a, a short span of time. And that's kind of what he's selling here. You don't see that. You still see that now, but nowhere near as much as you used to. Because nowadays, fucking these corporations are like, nah, we're going to put that shit out there and leave it out there. And we're going to maximize every fucking dollar we can get with it. If it's, if it's selling, fuck that limited time only. We'll leave right. it out there. Which, okay, I get that. But it's true. So, Doc, that's a good point. You better you better get here while you can, because uh, I ain't going to be here long. Good stuff. Okay. Um, God, this episode, is, we're on fire right now. We're, we're, we're literally on fire. And it's about to get even better, or it's about to stay on fire, I should say. Because now, from that, we go to Down and Dirty with Dutch and the Dirty White Boy and Ron Wright. And I have been fucking jonesing for this moment for a long time doc do you remember when we first had a discussion about this offline a couple months back God, you wouldn't shut up about it fuck me this is so great um here it is uh let, let's listen to what's going on now Run. okay as i mentioned well, my special well, guest tell you what, brother. we've been up in new york city just a party and having a wonderful time <laughs> Stein Brenner done rented us a big four bedroom place. We went to World Trade Center and went to park underneath, but it smelled too much like, like gas, so we left. <laughs> but we've been having a wonderful time, man, up in New York City, not down here in the old south, where the talk a lot of da da, you know. Hey, 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 hey. How you doing, Ma? <laughs> That's all these bunch of no good nothing happening to individuals can do, ain't it, Dutch? Uh, well, I have to agree with you right there. But, Mr. Wright, the sp all the talk this past week, my phone is rung off the hook. I've gotten some telegrams. I've got some faxes. The big speculation this week was that you actually got out of the wheelchair last week. And I just want to ask the question, is that true? And if so, are you healed? No, no, no sir. I didn't get up out of the chair. Let me tell you something. <laughs> You know, it just breaks my heart down here. I've shed so many tears in the past week. It just about got me down with bronchitis again. <laughs> I was seeing my beloved dirty white boy up there getting beat up the way he was by that Tracy Smothers. I was asking the good Lord to take care of things, and all of a sudden I just blacked out. And when I come back to, the man had the title, and we'd won. And I don't really know what happened, Dutch. I, I wish I could tell you, but I just don't remember nothing. Your heart. Well, there's your answer. He says he was blacked out. He didn't remember it, and I can't say it would be unethical for me because, like I said, I lost my contact lens. But, Mr. Wright, you have something with you here that's, that's, that I can't help but notice. What is this? And, Lord, you don't you don't know what this done to me. You just don't know what this and this bag means to me in my entire life, Dutch. I've had this thing for the past probably 15 or 20 years. This is my beloved, famous, 
Tennessee chain match, Jane. You see how pretty and shiny I've kept this for the past 15 years since I've not, I've been crippled in this wheelchair and not been able to have any of these matches. I've kept this thing polished, sandblasted. It looks like polished silver, what I'm going to do. I've looked for many years for a man that's capable for me to pass this chain down to. I found it right here in my beloved dirty white boy. I'm going to pass this chain down to you, brother. You're going to take this chain and somebody wants some chain match. They're going to be some East Tennessee chain match dog whoopings going on in this part of the country. Well, white boy looks like he has passed the legacy of the, of the Tennessee chain match on to you. And I have to say that is a tremendous tribute. Oh, man, this is just like your grandpappy giving give you his old pocket knife. Man, Ron, thank you very, very much. Come here. It's just me so much, me. Hey, that's all right. You people can boo. You can say what you want to. But Tracy Smothers, let me run this by you big time. On April the 2nd, Pikeville, at the Bluegrass Brawl, if you got the stinking guts enough to sign the contract for a chain match, I double dog dare you to sign it. <laughs> Alrighty, fans, you heard it. The gauntlet has been thrown. It's gone with the dirty white boy to Tracy Smothers. And fans, don't go away. We'll be back in 120 seconds. Up next, Tracy Smothers. Stay tuned. I love that. Doc, your thoughts. Well, I'm going to turn around to you. What do you, this is your, you've been waiting for this one. What are your thoughts on this? I, I mean, just Ron Wright and Dirty White Boy with the Yankees gear on, talking about how they're friends with fucking George Steinbrenner, <laughs> is the most absurd and ludicrous shit on the planet. I mean, I'm not, look, I know they're wrestling stars, but Steinbrenner is a fucking millionaire, and, and they're sitting in the fucking, you know, owner's box, or, it just, just, it's so absurd, it's great. And then, Goddamn dirty white boy, you know, mocking how people in the South talk as he's got his Yankees gear on still. And Ron Wright's explanation, again, in his Yankees gear for coming out of the chair was just glorious. I blacked out, brother, and when I came, I came too. I didn't know what happened. Uh, so blacking out now apparently allows you to walk out of your wheelchair. And, 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 and God comes down and is a blessing and being a blessing to you. And, and then, and then the, the, the part about... He gives him the nice sterling polished silver chain. It's just so utterly ridiculous. It's great. That's summing up for you, Doc. Sure. Okay. I just what did you think? You get your, I just wanted to get your jollies out because you've been bugging me about this for months. I'm like, you do realize this is the same episode that Arn Anderson comes out on. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Don't bury the lead here. I agree. Um, I'm just worried that you know. It's still there's still a nip in these Tennessee hills. I, I don't want Ron's bronchitis to get out of control. Pneumonia can be deadly for the elderly, so I'm a little bronchitis. concerned about that. He's always got a new fucking ailment. Uh, <laughs> fuck bronchitis. Uh, Hopper, what about I like, you? I like well, I like how he just straight up says, "I didn't get out of any chair." You're right, I blacked out when I came to. I didn't know what happened. <laughs> what an excuse for getting out of a uh, a chair, uh, Harper. Your thoughts? It tell you, the uh, dirty white boy looks like with that jersey on and that hat. If you watch a a baseball game, mm -hmm. he 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 uh, looks like one of, of those guys you see on Sports Center, the big old <laughs> fat guy that just uh, it, it looks perfect on him. We have that. We have that guy at work. You know that guy. I knew you were gonna. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's got a mustache and he's like 400 pounds and he just looks like you would see him at a yankee game with like yeah. four hot hot dogs in his hands just call up jeter get jeter back in there <laughs> and th right. those, are the, those guys always know what's best for the team yeah <laughs> They would be general manager if they didn't have to eat so many hot dogs during every game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah. so. Uh, keep, go ahead, Hopper. We got chain match coming? Uh, it, it would appear that way. I can't wait to see that shit. It would appear somebody's that way. Gonna, somebody's going to get busted open, and by somebody, I mean everybody. Yeah, yeah. for real, the ref, fucking Everybody. Everybody. Uh, Doc, any other thoughts on this segment? 
I just thought that if this was if we were if this was the real world if we were really doing this and that chain was the real chain that shit would have been dr- just soaked and caked in dried blood. <laughs> I love how he said it's it's his old chain and he's been polishing it. It's yeah. almost sterling silver. Yeah, I picture him like in his his fucking garage or something, just sitting there polishing some 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 fucking dog chain. Dirty, the dirty white boy is going to love this thing. <laughs> knowing, knowing good and goddamn well, they just bought that chain from the local Ace Hardware store <laughs> and brought it Definite, to the match. Definitely Ace. There's not a Home Depot with him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Those are only in the major cities. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, they go from that great segment to Tracy Smothers versus Larry Santo. The people are going nuts for Tracy. Like Harper said, he is their Hulk Hogan. That It is what yeah. it is. Smothers wins with ease in about 90 seconds with his jaw jacker move off top rope. Harper, any thoughts from the match? It's like Justin Timberlake coming out. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, they fucking pop for him. Yep. He's a man. And I guess uh, Larry Santos replaced Paul Lee, huh? Yeah, we ain't seen Paul Lee in a few weeks. I yeah. can't remember if he's done or not, but we, that's true. We haven't seen him in a while. Good point. Yeah, I've been I've been seeing this guy for the past, what, uh, month or he's, so. Yeah, he was at all the last tapings, and now he's mm-hmm. at this one, so it's at least a month. Yeah. Uh, Doc, your thoughts from the match? I'm going to say something here, and we all know, we all three agree on Tracy Smothers as – Pretty much awesome from top to bottom. Okay. But I'm going to say this. The jawjacker doesn't do much for me as a move. It yeah. It looks, looks like a pretty lame move for me. Uh, I mean, what would you rather he do? The Canadian Destroyer. Now, that would have been badass <laughs> to see Tracy do that. <laughs> that's a that's an awesome looking pile driver. That's a that's a weapon. Yeah, that's no, a I'm hell just, of a move. I, I'm just saying. I mean, it, it just. I. What if he did? Think about this. This would have been a great move for him to do with Magnum being out. Belly to belly would have been a great move for him. I think the business was just changing at that point too. You needed something. You need something a little bit more flashier, maybe. Okay. So Might anyway, what he was going for? I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm. Again, it does not take away from the fact that Tracy Smothers is a joy to have on the television screen at all times. I'm just saying that move doesn't do a lot for me. I'm okay with it because Tracy's a big guy, and to be able to do that off the top rope is still fairly impressive for okay. me. I mean, how tall is he, Hopper? I mean, you, you've, you've been there. Uh, He's like six four, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm six one, so yeah. He's about six three, six four. Yeah, it's a pretty impressive move for a dude his size. That's why I say that. But I hear you. No, no, I hear you there. All right. So uh, after that, Tracy does cut a promo. So here it is. Fans were in the ring right now with Tracy's mothers and a number of his young fans. They all wanted to come out. And I gotta pause it for a second. This shit is so babyface, so fucking all shucks. And I just had to say that as I'm watching it, because I know y'all can hear it, but I can see it. So here, let, let me let me continue now. Be with Tracy. All of you fans several weeks ago saw what happened to Tracy Smothers' flag, what the dirty white boy did to it. Well, these youngsters, they want to say that they don't agree with that kind of going on. And Tracy, we've been having money from fans all around. They wanted you to have another flag, and we want to present it to you right now from all of your all your wonderful fans. We're Jesus very proud Christ. of you and what you've done and what you stand for. Gosh, thanks, Bob. I mean, what can you say something like that? You know, I've been in this sport a long time, and I've had a lot of th- good things, and I've had a lot of bad things. But i got to say, that's probably the best things that ever happened to me. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd say, if I could get this thing unraveled right here. Man, this goes to show you that the South ain't never dead. This goes to show you that the South shall rise again. You know something? I heard that dirty white boy out here hollering and screaming, and all the folks have seen what he's done. They've seen him burn my flag. They see the big brawl we had last week. I know I got a Tennessee chain match coming up. 
for the Smoky Mountain Heavyweight title right there in Pikeville, Kentucky. I've never been in a chain match in my life. I've wrestled every Tom, Dick, and Harry in this sport. I've never been in that type of match. But you know what? I don't feel so alone no more. I see these kids right here. I see all these people right over here and over here in the entire South. Dirty white boy. Maybe you can beat Tracy Smothers, but you can't beat the wild-eyed Southern boy and all these kids and every man, woman, and child out there in TV land. I'll see you in Pikeville, April 2nd, big boy. I'm American by birth, and I'm Southern by the grace of God, and I'm going to be the next Smoky Mountain heavyweight champion. All right, and fans, right now, let's find out more about the Bluegrass Brawl. Jesus Christ, Doc. This is something you would never see on TV today. God, not even close. And well, how... I mean, nobody's going to present anybody with a Confederate flag on television. Well, and on top of that, I thought Bob Cottle was a little too comfortable standing there holding that thing. He's like, I kind of <laughs> like the way this feels, you know, working for Jesse Helms. <laughs> and then my last thought was, how much better was Smothers with the kids around him than Ellering was back in Mid South when we watched oh, yeah. Travesty? Yeah, <laughs> that was that was some shit. <laughs> yeah, Ellering. That whole for people who don't know, I don't. Even, I, don't I think it might be on the network because it's in '82. Ellering's got kids. The kids around him in Mid South. It was pretty fucking wicked. So yeah, yeah. It, it, he looks a Ellering lot more comfortable. Those. Ellering treated those kids like you would treat a napkin if somebody said, this is soaked in HIV blood. Jesus. Uh. <laughs> this is pretty bad, but yeah. Um, so um, this was this is so awesome. Hopper, your thoughts on this? Yeah, it, it's, it, it's just one of those things you just wouldn't see now. They love it's... their Confederate hero. It's so baby faced. I mean, it's just like they raise money from the fans to buy Tracy a new Confederate flag. And some and I was others is... at Go the ahead. flag, and it, it, it's probably the same flag he has now. <laughs> wow! Because the one, because the one he has now looks like it's just it's just brown, bro. Well, how do you get a new one these days? That's true, huh, I, bro? Trust me, I'm sure you could still buy one. Right, but you can't get it on, in, out in the in the free market. You got to go to the deep internet. Yeah, I bet you, I bet you can still buy it on free market somewhere. Yeah, dark web. What is that called? I'm just saying you can. You we're, can we're Bitcoin. You we're could Bitcoin. buy one. So you acting like stuff. the thing. You acting like it's like. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. But hey, I'm talking. I'm talking about. I ain't talking about Nazi flags. I'm talking about stars and bars, dude. You can get a Confederate flag. I'm going to get you one for your birthday. Okay, that's real nice of you. When's your birthday? Uh, Figure it out. Okay, Uh, we go from that to uh, do y'all want to go through the Bluegrass Brawl update here? I got a note on it. (laughs) Okay, well, let's, let's play it. Here it is. Smoky Mountain Wrestling in conjunction with the Pikeville College Alumni Association and Domino's Pizza of Pikeville God. present the Bluegrass Brawl on the April 2nd at the Pikeville College Gym. Six big matches with a triple main event. In a grudge match, primetime Brian Lee meets the evil Kevin Sullivan with their seconds, Tim Horner and the Night Stalker, handcuffed to the ring post. The Smoky Mountain Heavyweight title will be on the line in SMW's first ever Tennessee chain match. The Dirty White Boy defending against Tracy's mothers, both men chained together by an eight-foot chain. The main event is a Smoky Mountain showdown match. Three teams, nine men, each team battling for itself. Street fight rules, anything goes. When a man is pinned, his team is eliminated. Last team in the ring wins. Team number one, Robert Fuller, Jimmy Golden, and Dutch Mantel, the stud stable. Team number two, Jim Cornette's heavenly body, Stan Lane, Tom Pritchard, and Bobby Eaton. And team number three, Ricky and Robert, the Rock and Roll Express, and their partner, the enforcer, Arn Anderson. Regular ticket prices prevail. $8 ringside, $6 general admission, $5 for kids under 12. A limited number of Golden Circle tickets are available, which entitle you to sit in the first two rows of ringside and come early at 6 p.m. for a pizza party with the stars, courtesy of Domino's Pizza of Pikeville. Meet the Rock and Roll Express, Tracy's Mothers, Brian Lee, Tim Horner, and more. Free pizza and soft drinks and free autographed programs. Party with the stars at 6 p.m. only for the Golden God, Circle ticket holders, and those tickets are only $15. <laughs> Advanced tickets on sale at Citizens Bank of Pikeville. 
Family Federal Savings Bank of Pikeville, First National Bank of Pikeville, and all branches of the Pikeville National Bank. Tickets will also be on sale at the door until match time. It's the Bluegrass Brawl, Friday, April 2nd, Pikeville College Gym, Pikeville, Kentucky. Bell time, 8 p.m. Don't miss the Bluegrass Brawl. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> banjo ass music. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, well, Doc, we'll go to you first. You said you had a note on this. I have a couple. First of all, the banjo may be without a may be the worst instrument of all time. And I like country music. I'm not a big fan of bluegrass because I don't like banjos. It's a cool bit for about eight seconds. It's like shit. That's crazy oh god it's awful turn it off turn it off um they're real hard to play i think i mean i've tried to pick one up and play it before and it, it's it's a difficult instrument to get down but jesus Christ. and i like real country music like real old school country music but the banjo is just a thrashing <laughs> but <laughs> it somehow fit there i guess um Notice that they have Domino's as a sponsor here. That's pretty cool. There's all the banks are involved. The, I mean, the sponsors are lining up for this thing, and the card is stacked. That's pretty awesome. But the one note I had more than anything else is that front row tickets were $8 each. And so I thought if I had a plan, if I was going to attend, if I could go back in time and attend this, I would buy the whole front row so I wouldn't have to sit next to any of these hillbillies. I would just wow. be the only person on the front row. That's real classy, Doc. <laughs> That's 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 so nice of you. I give them an extra twenty if they can rope me off into it, my own special VIP section with bottle service. That's nice, Doc. That's that's real nice. Okay, uh, Harper, your thoughts on this? I mean, your Bruh, your, your ears needed a rape kit, right? God damn! Did, you ear, did your ears need a rape kit again? Fuck yeah! Did you need to be swabbed? <sighs> the only thing I heard was Domino's. That's all I heard. You want to go have a pizza party while yeah. Ricky Morton bangs some slut in the corner of the? <laughs> <laughs> okay anything Ma else hopper no don't ever play <laughs> that again <laughs> don't ever play it again i'll do it again just because all right um so so here's the thing uh they then go from that to they talk about chris adams and kevin sullivan in a brawl and a it, recent it's match it's followed by bullet bob um and then Sullivan, for people who are wondering, this is from the NWF, which was filmed in Kenner, Louisiana. I rem I never went to these shows, but I remember them happening back then. I believe they were run by Colonel Buck Robley. It's a the brawl they show is between Sullivan and Adams, and they insinuate that Adams has his eye poked out by a chair that Sullivan uh, hits him with. It's just. It's pretty insane when you look at it, but this is Kenner, Louisiana, that they're showing you uh, in this clip, and it's the NWF. So, what's, know, a Kenner, what's a what's a Kenner, Louisiana? How far is that outside that's, of? That's where the airport is, actually. The airport yeah, is it's Kenner. like two seconds okay. away. Yeah, when you fly yeah. into New Orleans, you actually fly into Kenner, and right. and then to get into New Orleans, you you leave Kenner, go into Metairie, and then you, you enter New Orleans. But it's not that far. I mean, it's if on the very outskirts of New Orleans, you're you're probably ten minutes from Kenner on, on, with no traffic. It's not. Yeah. So it's not. It's not. It's not a Huma. Fuck no. It's no, not no, Huma, no, no. Fuck no. No, it's not a Huma. <laughs> Harper's getting all fucking emotional. <laughs> Don't compare me to them Huma fuckers. Shit. Fuck that shit. <laughs> but yes, so. That's where the Harper, did you ever go to these NWF cards? No. I okay. didn't know this existed. Yeah, yeah. It was in the it was in the early nineties when this I actually think in that time period that was probably the only wrestling that was happening down there. I don't think there was any other independence. The the only other independent that I knew about, I think they started running in like ninety four or ninety five. So this was uh this was the only one during this time period. But anyway, so uh after after they showed a clip of Sullivan poking out Adams' eye, Bullet Bob Armstrong is gonna it, it comes out. Here it is. 
his eyes out. Now he could be permanently put out of professional wrestling right here. And with us right now is Smoky Mountain Commissioner Bob Armstrong. Commissioner, glad to have you with us. Now, I understand you've got some information about the rules concerning Kevin Sullivan's Russian roulette matches. You know, I had to insist that he gave me these rules, and only a perverted mind like Sullivan's could come up with this. Now, listen to this list of rules. I'm going to read them to you right now. Brian Lee will decide his own fate by rolling the dice. That's one dice. The number that comes up will be compared to the matches I'm about to tell you about. If it comes up to number one, they'll have a Prince of Darkness match. Both men will be blindfolded, and there must be a winner. Number two, a stretcher match. To win, your opponent must be carried out of the arena on a stretcher. Number three is a handicap match. Brian Lee would have to face Sullivan and the Night Stalker, two on one, all three men in the ring at the same time. Now listen to number four. The ring would be surrounded by four if the dice comes up on four. By, by you can fire, see, you say? By fire, you look at your screen right now, you'll see a tape of this match as it was held in Japan. Now, this has never been done in the United States. It would be a first for the USA. The ring would be surrounded by flames. Number five is the Singapore spike match. A box would be placed on all four turnbuckles, and that bo one of those boxes would contain a spike. They call it the golden spike. And any man that finds that spike can use it. So the man that gets it first is going to do some damage. Now, Brian Lee Lee's lucky number on this is six. If Brian Lee throws a six, he can have any kind of match he wants with any kind of rules. And I'll tell you what, this match is going to take place in Knoxville Sunday afternoon. That's March 21st in Knoxville. And believe you me, I hope it blows up in your hey, next Sunday. Before we get into next Sunday, first of all, make sure the bill gets paid to my psychiatrist on time. I don't want to have any more aggravations. I don't want to get aggressive, Bob Armstrong. Make sure the bill's paid on Let me time. Tell you something. I'm tired of paying your bills, and after Sunday, I may not have to pay any more bills. As a matter of fact, Sullivan, after Sunday, your check may just be cash. It looks to me like the deck is going to be stacked against Brian Lee. Stacked against Brian Lee! Sunday, it's like a gambling junket, Brian Lee. You'll be walking down the aisle Sunday in Knoxville with Lady Luck on your arm. You see, Brian Lee, you want to gamble? What you're doing is gambling your life away. You're playing against the house. Brian Lee, in most revolvers, when you spin it, there's only one chamber that's dangerous. In this one, you're playing against the house. Five are loaded, Brian Lee. And then there's your match. Looks like to me, all six of them are loaded, Brian Lee, because even if it ends up the roll of the dice, you gotta face me. And Brian Lee, you see, in junkets, most people go home without a dime in their pocket, Brian Lee. This time, I'm going to make sure there ain't a drop of blood left in your body. <laughs> All right. Um, Doc, you first. Wow. Uh, the first thing I had was... <laughs> fuck that fire match. God, nope. that looked, that shit looked crazy. Yeah, no yeah way. I'm with you on that. No how. Ain't happening. Um, Solomon got Bob Armstrong <laughs> hot but ba said maybe he won't have to pay his bills after that is that a stipulation in this match am i missing that no uh, they haven't really talked about that that's a good question but i i, I had that note too but that's kind of uh, i don't know if i don't know if something was supposed to be said in a previous episode or or that may have been needed to spelled out a little bit better but i agree i don't know what's going on there and i and if and if I actually really cared about primetime Brian Lee, I'd be a little bit concerned after Bob, uh, after Kevin Sullivan said he was going to take, uh, relieve him of every drop of blood in his body. God damn, huh? <laughs> what a, what a great line. Yeah, shit. Uh, Harper, your thoughts. That fire match looked like, I, I, was, I was like, there is, there's no fucking way they're going to pull, pull off that shit. No, that was just um, – that's kind of like one of yeah. those things, you know, it looks good on TV to, to say yeah. that's an option, but we know good and well that shit ain't going down like that, right? Fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. is this kind of like when, when a WCW had the, this, this, this spin, spin, the, spin the wheel? Spin the wheel, make a deal. Yeah, except I it's – Yeah. Except, except it's dice. Yeah. 
and, and it's not dice, fool. It's die. It's one die and multiple dice. Doc insulting people as usual. Okay. All right. Well, Bob Armstrong doesn't know singular versus plural. Okay. Well, At least good. he figured out how to say the bluegrass brawl. Yeah, that's true. Here we I go. Better be, Look, I better be careful. I, Bob Armstrong could stretch me. And, he and even would. It it. <laughs> Bob Armstrong, even after he passes away, will be able to stretch you. So, with that said, we go from that segment with Sullivan and, you know, it was actually pretty mild from Sullivan's standards from what we saw last week where he was about to slaughter some birds. We go from that to Victor Quinones is coming out, and he's going to cut a promo on Sullivan. I actually like this. This is funny. Here we go. Fans with us right now, Victor Quinones, who is the talent and booking agent for Japan, Puerto Rico, Mexico, and other spots around the world. And I understand you have some tremendous and great athletes. Yes, we do, and down in Japan and Puerto Rico and the rest of the world. But we want to bear with uh, Smoky Mountain about Kevin Sullivan, all the stuff he's been doing here in Smoky Mountain area. And he's been doing the same all over the world in Japan, Korea, Mexico. And we were trying to get together with Smoky Mountain to abolish him for professional wrestling. And besides that, we would like to introduce to the best wrestlers that we have in our organization with our wrestling today in the international match. All right, and we look forward to that, fans. So let's find out who they are. Right now, let's go to the ring, and thank you for being with us. Okay, the reason I thought it was funny was that motherfucker said they wanted to abolish Sullivan from pro wrestling. I was I couldn't get past his haircut. Yeah, yeah haircut. No, oh, God, bro. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I, I can't take I'm, someone I'm seriously grab. that fucking looks like that. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm gonna sc- I'm gonna screen grab that and take it the next time I get a haircut and say I want this. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking pathetic. Holy shit! Oh, Doc, any other thoughts besides the haircut? It just I mean, for people that think New York is a foreign country, for him to be international just lends another. S- credibility you know yeah uh, all right let's go to the next match so the next match is is crash the terminator versus miguel perez and for those who are not watching along with us crash the terminator is obviously hugh morris or as uh, many people know him as bill demott this match goes on for five minutes when out of nowhere sullivan and the night stalker run in and attack perez and crash and you know everything goes haywire doc your thoughts on this match before i mean uh, all right, well, your thoughts on just this segment, I should ask. Well, Miguel Perez also has some interesting body hair. Um, I don't think the crowd knew what to make of this. They didn't but, at all. But this was something that was done back in territory wrestling. I mean, there would be people brought in from different things and world class all the time. And I love seeing it because it's things that you don't normally see and it, it breaks, the, breaks the monotony. So while the match wasn't the best... They kind of had some awkward moments. I enjoyed it because I thought it was cool to see something that we don't normally get to see week in and week out. So I was all for it. Yeah, this was what happened in Territory Wrestling. Uh, Harper, you. Yeah, I was waiting for Crash the Terminator to kind of uh, join in with Sullivan and, and the Night Stalker because he looks like he'll be, you know, buddies with someone like that. But yeah. no, it was... It was all four of them going at it. And did they explain why? No, huh? Well, Not- it's because it's because Victor Quinones is trying to get him banned. You're trying to get me banned. I'll just beat up your guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, they explained it before. It, like, they didn't, I mean, I don't know if on commentary they really explained it, but on Victor Quinones right before just said he wanted to ban Sullivan. And, well, Sullivan comes out and says, okay, you want to ban me? I'm going to fuck your guys up. Because those two guys were from his promotion, so that's why that happened. Okay, uh, from there we go to a local promo. I am going to play, play the local. Yeah, play. I got it queued up, and I'm about to start it. So okay. Heavenly bodies against the Rock and Roll Express and the Enforcer Arn Anderson in Barberville. Oh, you sound real excited about it. I know all those genetic defects out there in Eastern Kentucky. They're going to be real excited about it too. They're not only going to come from Barberville. They're going to come from all over the state. 
And it's something that I don't think that you ought to be able to see. I don't think a big star like Arn Anderson ought to come to a hick town like Barberville. Just like I don't think Jim Cornette and the Heavenly Body should be there. You see, I know you people, you, you can't stand us. You hate us. Admit it. Come on out and say us. You want to see us get our legs broken, our arms twisted, our necks popped off. And Arn Anderson, he's the guy that can give it to you. Because he's the enforcer. And I've seen what he can do firsthand. So is Stan Lane, so is Bob Eaton, so is Tom Pritchard. Rock and Roll Express, I don't know how you've done this. I don't know how that you've accomplished this except that Arn has a little problem with Bobby Eaton. But I guarantee you this. You put competition like that in that Knox Central High School in Barberville across the ring from all three heavenly bodies in Jim Cornette. We're going to have to take some desperate measures because desperate people do desperate things. Arn Anderson, you're coming off a bad leg. You might have to go back that way because in your own immortal words, a three-legged table is no good to anybody. One way or another, Arn Anderson, Rock and Roll Express, I can promise you this, in Barberville, Kentucky, and that Knox Central High on Friday night, you're going to see the damnedest six-man tag match you've ever seen in your entire lives. And we are not, and I repeat not, going to be the ones to suffer. Arn, Rock and Roll, watch out. Doc, do you want me to play the quality in uh, soundbite there, too? Nah, like, that, that place doesn't exist anymore, I don't think so. Oh, shit, okay. Uh, go, um, go ahead. I love it because... When you saw Arn in the arena, they had a, you know, they were scared and they recoiled. But now he's got his courage back, and he's like, "All right, well, you played your move. Now it's turned for my move. Maybe you, we, maybe we hurt you. We're desperate, desperate times. You know, that's great. We're still not gonna lose. So just that's the retort. That's the that's the answer. That's the the shot back. It's the volley. It's it's how it's done. Yeah." Hopper, you? Yeah, what he says, uh, basically what he's saying is you might force us to go there to break in your fucking leg. And we're not afraid to fucking do it if we have to. Yeah, a, a, a table with three legs ain't good for nobody. That's um, right. I liked it. Um, Look, we fly, in it. Our seaf- we fly in our seafood. You think we won't break your leg? Right, right. We're not, nothing's, nothing's, bu- we're not below that. Yeah, I like that, man. This was good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because he puts him over. He says, you know, you're a big star, but uh, we're going to re injure you. Good stuff. Well, let's close things out then. So after that promo is the stud stable, uh, Dutch, Golden, and Fuller. Here they are. Jesus Christ. Hey fans, with us right now, the stud stable. What about the blue glass brawl? Little fellas, let me tell you something. Stay out of my face and hold the microphone up high. Because stud's going to tell you, I got 15 women running around on me. IRS up my rear end, son. I got all kinds of problems. But I'm going to guarantee you, son, I ain't going to do the Von Erich thing. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not. Because I found out now that we got the match we've been waiting on. This is the one that puts everything in order. Jim Cornette and Heavenly Bodies. You're going to be out of it, boys. And then I seen you jerk the sheet on the hot dog. The one-legged hot dog. Dutch, <laughs> hold his head. Jimmy, get hold of his legs. I'll snap that toe on you. And, son, I guarantee you, you're going straight to the hospital. Your career is over in tight. All right. Well. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> son, we oh. ain't going to do the Von Eric thing. And he puts a gun <laughs> to his head. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Holy uh, shit. Yeah, this well, made me uh rewind it. So, I think we lost he's Doc. Just so off the cuff. No, oh, I'm back. He okay. So here's the thing. Do we file this under things you can't do in 2017? Or they, I I just I don't family, know. We saw we, we or saw fa- that or, or family friendly. <laughs> no, no, no. We 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 actually saw this. We saw this like a year and a half ago when Paige made that comment to Charlotte about her brother that's dead. And see what happened. Well, I, I mean, I'm just saying. I, I look, man. I like it. This is yeah. wrestling. Why not? This go should out be allowed. High. We've been yeah. hot for an hour. Let's go out hot. Yeah, let's go off. Let's sign off. That motherfucker said, I ain't going to do the Von Eric thing, brother. He Jesus with Christ. Little, he started with little fellers. Do we want to hear that uh, again? I do. Yeah. Right, here here we go. 
me get it. Let me get it up. There it is. Right now, the stud stable. What about the bluegrass brawl? Little fellas, let me tell you something. Stay out of my face and hold the microphone up high, cause stud's gonna tell you. I got 15 <laughs> women running around on me. IRS up my rear end, son. I got all kinds of problems, but I'm gonna guarantee you, son. I ain't gonna do the Von Eric thing. Don't you know what that. I'm talking? No, I'm not, because Don't I found that. out now that we got the match we've been waiting on. <laughs> this is the one that puts everything in order. Jim Cornette and Heavenly Bodies. You're going to be out of it, boys. And then I seen you jerk the sheet on the hot dog. The one-legged hot dog. Dutch, hold his head. Jimmy, get hold of his legs. I'll snap that thong on you. And son, I guarantee you. <laughs> I ain't going to do the Von Eric thing. God. Oh. Hey, All right. And then, and then uh, Jimmy Golden's like, no, 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 man, don't do that. <laughs> he said he's got tax problems. He's talking about the women that are, that are, that are on him. But I ain't going to do the Von Eric thing. Woof. And again, no Von Eric's wrestled anywhere close to the Smoky Mountains. So we're referencing other things. That's what makes it great. Well, yeah. And world, I'm sure. There, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the people in the Smoky Mountains. Let me ask you this. You. you 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 do as you say that you're saying that the people in the Smoky Mountains do understand his reference when he says I ain't gonna do the Von Eric thing. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just making sure we. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so too. Oh boy. Anything else, Doc? From that. That's just. I mean. Incendiary, and I love the way. Robert Fuller can get more in in less time than anybody I think I've ever heard. Yeah, he got a lot in right there. That shit wasn't even a minute long. He's like the reverse Manny Fernandez who stands out there for three minutes and re keeps repeating himself, man. Fuller gets in there and it's like, look, I know you're going to wrap me up. And when I, hear, when I hear the music, I'm hitting, I'll be done. Hit right, it, little good. Fuller. Any other thoughts, Hopper? No, it was fucking uh, perfect. It was perfect. Fucking All right, let's send, this, let's send this puppy home and we're going to do so in a second. Uh, I want to thank the patrons out there. If you're not a patron, please become one. It's tinyurl.com slash BTT patron. couple bucks a month, you get access to all of the patron exclusive episodes that only patrons get via the Podbean app. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash BTT patron. The thing is, eight free shows a month. They come to you. They're on time. We never miss an episode. They're always there for you every single Thursday, every single Sunday as of this, this recording in September the 8th of 2017. So consider becoming a patron help support the show and you'll get access to the exclusive content as well and uh i want to uh thank joe stasi from old school pro wrestling lives while i'm at it all right let's talk about the uh, government cheese fuck it i'll go first this bitch is getting a 9.25 that's disability checks dude. i'm sorry disability checks 9.25 for me uh doc what are you giving it go to harper first a 10 you give it a 10 yeah man Fucking Arn Anderson. That's true. <laughs> Dude, I'm mean, let me change mine. You sold me nine point seven five. Go ahead. They had a, a Cornette doing the oh, who was that? David Duke and all that yeah. shit. Yeah. Don't it's forget about Ron thing. Wright. Yeah, fucking Ron with the uh, Ron Wright with the Yankees shit. Yeah. And Smothers, the fucking... Smothers got a new flag. Yeah. So don't pull the Sullivan, Von Eric. Sullivan, Sullivan, don't the Von Eric Sullivan blinded Chris Adams. We had an international match. Fuck it, I'm yeah. going ten like you, Hopper. You sold me. That's true. I forgot that quick. That's mm -hmm. right, bro. That's right. All right, um, Doc, what are you giving it? I can't say this with absolute certainty, but I'm going to say it anyway. This may very well be my favorite one-hour program of wrestling in the history of my watching the sport. I don't know, other than lopping Horner off the beginning, how you make this any better. Give me a 10. Yeah. Wow. Trifecta. Well, Perfect well, score. Well, this is, I mean, what would you do better here? Other than, like, earlier, if Rick came out, but Arn makes more sense. Yeah, right. There's a story behind it. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. You're, you, you are multi-year, multi-federation storytelling with Arn Anderson. Where do I sign up? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you're right. You're right. It's, it's hard not to give it to him. I mean, it's hard not to uh, give him a 10. Mm -hmm. You're right. This is perfect, man. This is, uh, this is perfect from start to finish. 
Start to finish. You you, you chop t- Horner off the beginning, and yeah, it's kind of hard. I mean, and then and, like and, 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 here's here's how great here's how great it was. Horner couldn't bring it down. Horner couldn't bring oh. it down, and. Robert Fuller at the end says he's not going to blow his brains out the way that Von Erichs did. How the hell, how great is an episode, as we segue, for Robert Fuller to pull that line <laughs> for for Dirty White Boy to be in a Yankees jersey, and neither one of them are getting government cheese. Right. Jesus Christ. Mm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. This is, All right. you know what? Those 700 rubes in Seaverville, Tennessee, would have been fully within their rights to start breaking out chanting, this is wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's very true. All right, we're going to give out the government cheese. Uh, I did want to say I forgot to mention the Hall of Fame patrons at Thin Man Within, Slider 91 US, Justin Rasmussen, at Shep Daddy 32, USC 49ers Dodger, at Gerald Green the third, at T Hog 94, at SV Padgham, at Martin Howell 71, at Tim Morecci, Coldman 822, at Gobbled Unreal, and at Unconvinced Ray. I want to mention y'all, thanks for your Hall of Fame members, memberships via the patron link. And uh, tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. Give the link to your wives, girlfriends, and the women in your family and tell them to use it. Give them your credit card and tell them to use it. No, don't do that, but you know the drill. It is a great way to support the show on an ongoing basis. We'd appreciate it if you would use it. Again, it's tinyurl.com slash BTT Amazon. Thank you very much. And uh, lastly, I want to plug the wrestling podcast about nothing with the Kingpin, Brian Malonis, and Mike Crockett twice a week. Just search WPAM wherever you get your podcast from. Um, Doc, you go first. Government cheese. I mean, I, we're going to give it to the same person, so I don't know why we're all just saying this. But What's causing all this? Yeah, Arn Anderson. Hopper, you. Arn Anderson gets his first taste of government cheese. Yeah, buddy. Wait, he's gotten... he, snatched, he snatched it straight the hell out of Robert Fuller's hands, too. <laughs> so here's a question, and I know we're going long right now, but so what? I don't care. This is a 10. Where would where else do we need to be? This is the well, only <laughs> thing that's keeping me from doing the Von Erich thing today. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a question, though. Like, seriously. Arn might be... The very first, Arn is only this, I should say this, Arn is only the second person in Smoky Mountain and the NWA who's gotten a government cheese and a Rolex. Because I know Cornette's gotten it, right? We know Cornette has yeah. gotten, Cornette's gotten government cheeses and Rolexes before, obviously. Has anyone else gotten government Eaton, cheese and Rolex? Eaton, Eaton's never gotten a Rolex. Fuck no. Eat, no. Eaton's never got a Rolex, and I don't think Ricky and Robert have gotten a Rolex yet. I could be wrong. I mean, am I thinking about that right? I don't know. I'm asking. I, I don't think so, no. I mean, we had Buddy Landell at the beginning of both of these, too, when we started doing the reviews, but I know Buddy never got a, a Rolex. He may have gotten cheese, but I don't know if he got a Rolex. Um, actually, I think he got some cheese when he stuffed his fucking nut nutsack drenched <laughs> check in Tim Horner's fucking mouth and <laughs> proceeded to hope Tim Horner choked on it on his fucking ball sweat. <laughs> uh, but I think Arn is only the second. Doc, uh, as I, as I'm talking things and you're thinking about it, do you what do you think? I can't think of anybody else. Yeah. So you First know what? One. But you but you know what we've done with this episode. We've done What's what that? Tracy Smothers has told the people he's going to do. We started at the bottom, and we've climbed that great smoky mountain all the way to the top. This is pretty impressive to get to episode 59 and be where we're at with this. I do I do agree. This is, this is insane, what, what's happened here. And, what's and causing other, all this? And here's the other thing. If you got a weak stomach, just skip over next week. Oh, it's too bad we can't go to that one right now, right? Right. Next week pops off in a different way than this. You know, at some point in the in the recent past, I get the feeling there was a Booker meeting where Corny was like, you know, this family friendly thing was a nice concept, but what we could really use <laughs> is some heat. Okay, well, family friendly went out the window. Not not just next week that we're talking about, but we had a man make a joke about a family suicide. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd, multiple. I'd say multiple. Yeah, multiple. I'd say family friendly is is gone out the way. So here's the thing: Would I be wrong to clip that from Robert Fuller saying I'm not going to do the Von Eric thing? Do it. What do I care? I hope and everybody play that sound bite. To- I hope everybody <laughs> listening to my voice does the Von Eric thing later today. Well, I, I, That's I will nice. admit, I will admit, listening to your fucking needle nose ass fucking voice makes me want to do the Von Eric thing sometimes. There's a lot you could learn by listening to my voice, son. I bet, I bet. Jesus. Jesus. Oh boy. Jesus. Okay, man, that was uh, that was a hell of an episode, and uh, this is how I'm feeling right now. Yeah, I say. Baby's got a pot roast on. Um, man, let's close things out. So, uh, Harper, go ahead. We didn't do it last week. Go ahead and plug the the Vimeo. We forgot to do it on the on the Smoky Mountain show. Go on Vimeo on demand. Wildcat with the K. It's five fucking dollars. It's like five cans five. of spam. That's like whoa. That's like ten cans of Vienna sausages. <laughs> And probably about 15 cans of pot of meat for y'all. <laughs> okay. Okay? Har- Harper 15 to get 15% off. Come on, man. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Oh, boy. Uh, check out the uh, Pro Wrestling Tea store. There's a couple of ways to get there. Probably the easiest way is just the Facebook page. Facebook.com slash booking the territory. Click shop now, and it will take you to the Pro Wrestling Tea store. And if you use FB5, I think the promo code should still be good when this goes out. FB5 should get you 5% off. Again, uh, check out the, the store and, and buy a t-shirt or two. Uh, also go to Twitter at BTC underscore podcast. I'm at Mike504 Saints, Hardbody Harpers at CJH Hudat. And give us a five-star review on iTunes uh, if you're listening there. Uh, the the five-star reviews have slowed down. We'd appreciate it if you'd give us one. I don't have anything else. Doc, you got anything? Tucker, dude. Tuckered, man, but a hell of an episode. Great stuff happening this week and more to come next week. Hopper, hit the tagline and get us out of here. Book it, bitch. <laughs>